Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we have another glorious Napoleon Total War online battle for you. And this one was sent in by our good friend Karl von Clauschwitz once again. And this is a battle on Syrian Ridge in the desert, where you fight over this ridge in the middle. And we have a few nations that we've not even seen before in any online battle so far. So let's go through the armies. First things first... Um, the rules for this fight, I believe, were max three lights and no artillery. As you can see, no one has any artillery, which is great. It's always good to see battles without artillery, just because there's a bit more tactics and a bit less smashy-smashy, if you know what I mean. But first things first, let's have a look at Karl's army, the Ottomans, over here. He has ten of the Nizam Kadit infantry. He has four... Of the Sifai Cavalry or Sipai Cavalry. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. If anyone wants to comment how to pronounce that, would be amazing. But these great Lancer unit, very strong melee cav unit. On top of that, he has um, five of the mounted Nizam a Kadet um, Cavalry, which is a great unit. And he's led by a standard general's bodyguard. So he didn't even bring any lights in this army. And then we have the French which are next to him with an army of three voltigeurs, the French Volters. Very good light infantry unit, although they don't have rifles. He has two of the standard fusiliers of the line. Here they are, the glorious boys in blue. Three of the glorious boys in red, the Swiss foot. Two units of the old guard so two whole units of these absolutely beastly boys and one unit of the young young guard the very strong elite infantry of the french on top of that he is led by a general staff and he has six units of the chasseur a cheval one of a beastly beastly unit on top of that we have gb next door to them which has two king's german legion lights if we can find those boys here they are king's G german legion light foot in their green uniforms very nice indeed he has one of the standard light infantry um somewhere in here somewhere in here there they are the standard light foot there they are fantastic and then he has eight of the standard british foot he has one of the great Scottish boys from the Highlands, the Highland Foot. Then he has one of the Coldstream Guards. What beastly unit over here. Here they are, very elite infantry looking very fancy over there. And two of the standard um, militia on top of that. So not a very elite army over here, just a standard army. Where are those militia? Here they are, the Fensibles. Ready to go, the militia boys. Top of that, he's got three dragoons and one 15th regiment of hussars, an elite hussar regiment. Very nice light cavalry unit there. And he's led by a standard general's bodyguard. Now we have Denmark, which I don't believe we've seen before in this game. And he has three units of the sharpshooters, the Danish uh, rifle unit. He has seven units of the standard line infantry for Denmark in their glorious red coats. And he has three units of the lifeguards of foot. So very elite, strong infantry unit there. On top of that, he has four standard dragoons. There isn't a huge amount of choice in the Danish roster. So that's probably why this army is a bit of more uniform than a lot of the others we'll be seeing today. Now, if we go across to his opponent, the French over here. This is a lot less uniform. As you can see, got to check my notes here, guys. He's got four Swiss foot glorious boys, three chasseurs. What else does he have? He has a guard seaman regiment, something that you don't see very often. And they, to me, have potentially the best uniform in the whole of this game. I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. Absolutely fantastic uniform. He has three chasseurs. We've said that. 
He has four Fusiliers of the line, four standard line infantries. He has a National Guard. Some of these wearing the revolutionary cockade there. Ready to fight for the revolution or the emperor. And he has one unit of the old guard. Very elite boys. And of course, four units of the standard chasseur Asheval. Now let's make our way over to the GB player facing GB himself. So he has three units of the rifles. Sharps regiment. He has four units of the standard foot he has one unit of the 88 Connaught Rangers. Here they are. Look at the boys from Connaught in Ireland, ready to go. He has one unit of the King's German Legion foot. So King's German Legion foot versus King's German Legion light foot all the way from Hanover. And he has two units of the foot guards. Should be here. Two units of the foot guards and one of the glorious Coldstream guards. So a pretty elite army on top of that his cavalry is very elite it is two units of dragoons so strong heavy cavalry wielding their claymores as you can see the claymores there they are look at that claymore and here we have the royal scots greys a hugely strong heavy cavalry unit and he is led by a standard general staff as we've seen so now we move on to Sweden, another nation that we've not seen at all. And this army is slightly weird in the fact that there's no general staff leading them. They're actually led by one of their cavalry units. So they have three units of the Jaegers, the standard rifleman for Sweden. He has nine of the standard line infantry, two of the lifeguards of foot for these boys. Looking very nice. We haven't seen any of these units before, so it's nice to see them with their blue and yellow that's very nice color scheme there and he has four of the lifeguards of horse so four very elite heavy cavalry units which one of them is his general very strong elite cavalry there but can they stand up to the chasseurs as well let's let's see <laughs> so over here we have prussia facing carl with his three prussian fusiliers he has um, eight musketeers, so eight of the standard Prussian musketeers, flags billowing in the breeze, we might as well put it on slow-mo now, and he has three of the foot guards, here they are, I love these guys with their, whatever that is on top of their shako, I do not know, but it looks cool, and on top of that, his cavalry, he has four units of the Prussian lancers, now as you can see, it's beginning to start like many other battles with a big cavalry charge and his cavalry charge across the whole map look at this but it does seem that Carl's side is more aggressive with their cavalry and look at these the mounted rifles ready to go he's bringing his sifi cavalry up to see whether they will engage in melee but the prussian player is being sensible and deciding that maybe his cavalry will not be able to stand up to these boys and here the first shots of the battle ring out here are the chasseurs de cheval firing away. And there does not seem to be any sound for some reason. What is going on with that? Sound, no gunshot sounds. Just the birds in the breeze. <laughs> but as you can see, the Swedish flayer fighting away, bringing his men into the battle, trying to get them with his lifeguards of horse. But of course, these guys, the chasseurs de cheval, are going to be firing into the enemy easily and bringing them down from the side which is a very strong thing to do and on top of that the uh, Britain from this side has brought his dragoons in now which is a very big move trying to get rid of these chasseurs a cheval and as you can see this chasseur on this side fighting away with the Jaegers trying to get rid of them fantastic here they go the chasseurs still fighting this lifeguard of horse, but with that uh, dragoon uh, reinforcements, they are not going to be able to beat them, are they? One sec, guys. I'm just going to check my audio. Here we are. We are back, and the audio is working. I just turned it off and turned it on. The classic, the classic way to solve any issues you have in, in here with technology. Turn it off and turn it on again. And as you can see, Carl is bringing his great horde of horses across to try and save these guys but as you can see the infantry is doing a pretty good job of it anyway getting their firing off into these guys and they're 
kind of reducing these elite horse units down quite far. Quite a lot already, which is great. And the general has already died. Where has that been? Let's have a look. Uh, it, was, it was because the Swiss Swiss guy had these royal, uh, these lifeguards of horse as his general unit. It has already died. And as you can see, Carl's side seeming to be the more aggressive and taking the hill now all the way across the map. Denmark pushing forward really strongly. But you can see this, this flanking movement by the French here is going to be extremely strong. That is going to put a lot of pressure on these guys, which is why he's moving his Dragoons across. Try and do some damage. But as you can see, the rifles here firing on these French troops as well as these guys. And he's using the hill to his advantage, kind of hiding them behind the hill so he knows that those chasseurs cannot actually hit him while they fire in the sides. Now let's make our way back over to the center. Carl's side has well and truly taken the hill, which is really good effort from them. That is what you want to do on this map, guys, is try and take that hill as aggressively and early as possible. And here you can see the British troops pushing forward, trying to get rid of these French troops here. Here they go, the Coldstream Guards, the glorious boys. Let's watch them charge or fire. I believe they are probably just going to line up here and ready to get ready to fire. Come on, boys. Let's go. Fire away. No, they're going to be firing to the right, aren't they? So they go forward again. Here they come. And here comes the fuck from the enemy. British versus British. The British Civil War. Some great firing in there, boys. Well done. And all across the map, engagements are starting to happen. Bit of a stalemate more on this side. But that is because the left flank, it looks like, is the flank that Carl's army is going for. And as you can see, Chasseurs did charge into these line infantry, but this French player is doing a decent job of uh, pushing the Danish player back from this flank and trying to hold him in the middle here. That's his big play there. Get around that outside. But as you can see, this British player as well is trying to help out, trying to plug this gap there. There's, there's a bit of a gap in the... Uh, British and French lines here that he can exploit and try and force this flank in on itself while this flank is getting forced inwards. As you can see, the lifeguard afoot already setting up. Does have his cavalry around here ready to go as well. That is going to be a crucial move. All the way over here on the far flank, you can see these troops, the guard units of Prussia, coming all the way round this uh, lake, which is interesting choice of tactics it is a bit of a divide and conquer attempt but i don't think that it's going to prove too painful for carl unless he goes really quickly as you can see the prussian troops waving in the heat rays over here but all the action happening on this far left hand side currently guys a look at these danish boys firing away come on boys let's go Fire! He's pushing now with the chasseurs, at the chasseurs, trying to do damage against them while this flank is getting attacked. So he basically is trying to save his left flank by pushing in the middle, which is a good tactic. These rifles doing some really good, decent damage. Coldstream guards have already taken quite a lot of damage as well. These rifles taking pot shots at this foot and they are going to retreat. Over here, we are still at slight stalemate. But as you can see, light, the rifles are firing on a lot of these troops over here. And Carl hiding his troops behind the hill, which is decent. And he's sending his Nizam Kader infantry round to break this flanking move, which is a great effort. Let's go across to the other side, see how these lifeguards of foot are faring. And they're doing a decent job. But of course, you've got the fusiliers of the line in here. Which are coming forward. They're kind of overlapping a little bit. But it's three units. Well, it is four with this square. I do not want, know why that is. they are still in square. Good job he's brought them out. As you can see, forcing the Dragoons into there. To force them into square. Great tactic. That is always going to do. And Carl has his troops all the way over here. Which is a fantastic, <laughs> amazing amount of micro for him to be able to do that. I always marvel at the amount of micro that this guy can do. It's crazy. Here's a bit of a stalemate between the foot guards and the Nizam Kadip. 
Obviously, in a straight firefight, the Nizam Kadit will lose. But I'm thinking Carl is just putting them there just to halt their advance for a little while while he sticks his lances around there as well. He still has a lot of cavalry on this side, but he has sent those cavalry all the way through the middle. And it's a bit of a stalemate everywhere else. There, the 15th Hussars going in for a charge. Go on, boys. Bit of a weak charge, but they went in for the charge nonetheless into that Swiss foot unit. And as you can see over here, a bit of chaos ensuing as the Chasseurs of Cheval fight the Dragoons of the Danes. And these guys have started... Oh, look at that. They have been shredded by the lifeguard of foot. Look at that heat wave over there. You can see how uh, much the heat is affecting these guys. And a lot of these units can't form square anymore. So that is going to be a big problem for them. They do have an old guard there. So if this, But if this flank crumbles, they are completely screwed over here. Even if it looks like the Danish player is in a little bit of a retreat. Over in the middle. We don't have much going on. It's still a stalemate. But of course, Carl is starting to withdraw his Nizam Kadit guys. Just because, obviously, he's heavily outnumbered over this side. Which, he's not going to win that fight if he's heavily outnumbered. And they are foot guards as well, which are a very strong unit. Now, let's get over back to the left flank. We can see the French forming square trying to push back the cavalry but the lifeguards of horse are now going to come lifeguards of foot are now going to come through start shredding those squares they just need to get rid of this old guard obviously a very strong very tough unit but the french player is in full full retreat over here whereas in the middle carl has gone for a decent charge into those chasseurs getting rid of them while the dragoons are chasing this Nizam Kadit unit. He's obviously sacrificing this Nizam Kadit unit in order for these guys to come forward and pr put a bit of pressure on this middle bit of French, uh, middle French player. Just because they're winning this flank, but this has kind of opened up a lot for them here. So it's going to be a big problem if they don't manage to uh, get rid of these guys, or if these guys can come through and break them in half. And as you can see, the British player is bringing troops over to try and plug that gap. And the French player is moving left as well to plug the gap. Here is Carl defending on this side against the foot guards. The Nizam Kader infantry. Oh, look at these uh, Swedish lifeguards of horse just running through with their dead bodies attached to them. Oh, no. Oh, God. And here's the Sipai cavalry as well, ready to go. They are a glorious unit. Look at them. They look fantastic. But all the action still happening on this far left flank as the French are in full retreat and the Danish are charging them down with the support of Karl. Um, the French over here, yes, still doing all right. He's got his guard seaman in um, and he's got his Swiss foot back here as well. But the cavalry is kind of overwhelming them over here. There's a lot of cavalry being thrown into this left flank and it is doing, paying dividends for Karl's alliance. Here come the lifeguards of foot, ready to put the pain down on the old guard once again. But this is actually a re relatively decent force over here, ready to defend. It's a bit of a choke point, so defending this choke point is a uh, going to be hard, um, easy job for them compared to defending a wide open area where they could get flanked easily. Looks very much like Carl's Alliance has won in this center area as well and done a very decent job of mopping them up. Now let's look at kind of this central area because it looks like there has been some action. Uh, predominantly looks like cavalry. There's a lot of stakes down over here as well. But this French player is just holding it seems, which is a good thing to do while the left flank is under attack. He is very spread out, the French player as well, as well as the British player. The British player is bringing round lots of these units to try and come around here, I'm assuming, and flank this whole side. Prussians are seeing this and sending their lancers over, which means that they will be microwing heavily um, across the whole map, just like Carl's doing as well. And here go the Danish cavalry once again, going through these fusiliers of line. Surely they're going to rout. Surely they're going to break. Yes, and they break. And into the back of the other Swiss foot, and the old guard are going to get shredded now. Let's watch this. Poor old guard stuck in square in the desert, getting shredded by these boys. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, very, very decent attack. And who has died? See, 
Ah, one of the generals was charged in here and they have died. And that was, I'm assuming, this French general. And as you can see, this French army is pretty much cleaned all the way up now. And the British are ready to flank around this side. Which is a huge turn of events. Because when that initial uh, flanking movement happened, the Danish player was under all sorts of pressure. But I guess, help from your friends, guys. Help from your friends. That is the key. That is the key to winning Napoleon at battles with more than one-on-one. -on -one. And that has really opened the door to a huge flank around this side. And as you can see over here, Carl is getting nicely spread out here, ready to go, ready to face these foot guards. He does know how powerful those foot guards might be. And it is a kind of precarious situation right now, because if this Prussian player goes for a full-on assault on this side, he might be able to push through and really uh, encircle Carl. But Carl does have cav advantage, which it counts for a huge amount in Napoleon. An absolutely huge amount. Everywhere else, the stalemate continues. These guys coming down off the hill. The old guard no longer wanting the hill of dead horses anymore. The British player just holding off his enemies over here while he prepares to flank fully around this side. And you can see what a big amount of troops that are being pushed around here and the remnants of the Danish army it's literally just these units so little units left are going to push around as well so many lives sacrificed on the first charge and here go the British their foot going in but before we look at that let's just watch as Carl brings his cavalry into action over here very decent good micro with the cav again killing those lancers with his mounted He's Amkade. And you can see the Prussian player now deciding that it's time to retreat when he's walked them all the way around there, which is kind of crazy. And here go the Sipai going in to the light infantry. Wow, running straight through them. What beasts. They are absolute animals in melee, guys, and in the charge. So they are very good. And as you can see, Carl's bringing his troops forward. Probably just going for the charge. Probably not initially going for the charge, but it has become the charge. These guys are going to get some decent shots in if they manage to form. Look at that. Kill them, boys. Kill them. Fire. Fire. Fantastic. And over. Oh, look at this. Glorious charge from both sides. But Carl's bringing his troops back to make sure that he shoots into these guys. These guys are nearly all routing as well with quite a large amount of troops, which is a very, very good result for him. And he's going hard on these foot guards and lancers. These foot guards are absolutely going so slow. They're tired. Look how tired they are. They're going so slow. Look at that. They are going very slow. And here comes the Grand Cavalry Charge, guys. And this surely is going to put an end to this Prussian player. Look at that. He's got all his troops blobbed up. And they all have bad morale. And I think... I don't believe his general's dead. His general's over there. But yes, this is a huge Cavalry Charge. Really, really big cavalry charge. Oh my god, shredding that block of Prussian, Prussian troops. Absolutely shattering the center. You can see how much things can change in a little bit of time. Here come the, the Nizam Kadit, supported by the mounted Nizam Kadit. They are going to be putting the hammer down on these foot guards and pursuing them through. What a beastly charge. It absolutely shredded this Prussian player. I can't believe they, that all those Prussian troops routed so easily. One Let's just quickly check back on this far flank. And as you can see, the British player is going hard at his British opponent. The 88th Connaught Rangers engaged with the Coldstream Guards. And I think there's only going to be one winner there. Only 44 of the Connaught Rangers left. Very nice indeed. And here you can see that this flank... He's going to just basically enclose this whole flank. And this British player really doesn't have much left over here. As you can see, this British player has a load left. Carl's British player. So this is both flanks are basically caving in for both sets of troops now. Which is a bit of a problem for them. Uh, for the uh, opponents. We'll call them the opponents, guys. This is a big problem for them. As both flanks are just caving in to pieces. Now over here, the foot guards, he's managed to rout two of the foot guard units already, which is amazing. And that's probably because of the dual mounted Nizam Kadit volleys with 
the Nizam Kade infantry volleys, and this last foot guard is going to stand. But look at them, they're going so slowly because they're tired, but they are going to be absolutely shredded. Um, so the Prussian player is still trying to defend, same as the Swedish player. But they seem so spread out now. Look how spread out the Swedish player is. Because the flanks have collapsed, they're trying to plug holes everywhere. And the French player going for a grand charge against the Swedish line infantry. Very nice indeed. The British, Carl's British, are coming around the flank and doing some serious damage. As well as plunging through the centre. A great charge over here. Literally 10 feet apart with rifles in the middle. This one doesn't want to shoot, though, for some reason. He's just staring at the enemy. Look at him. Just staring them down. Saying, you shall not pass. And for the moment, it seems to be working. But yes, some brilliant moves across here. As you can see, some very, very close combat. Very close combat. As the French player now sees that the Swedish player is so spread out that he can take his opportunity to push forward. And over here... The final remaining foot guards are getting shot to pieces. They don't seem to be doing anything. They are firing back a little bit, but they've not really done much, have they? The, all three of these foot guards have been shredded by Carl. And he's got three units of Nizam Kadit, and he's removed his mounted Nizam Kadit because they are needed elsewhere. Here they are, ready to go. And the Swedish player's flank is now under full, full fold on both sides. Unfortunately for him... This British player, obviously, still got a reasonable amount of troops, but he's just going to fold under the pressure from both sides. It's brutal amount of pressure coming in. And you can see the full bullhorns here, the bullhorn formation that is destroying the these the troops, this army. What a very, very good battle. Some very nice uh, flanking action on both sides. Um... That push by the French player initially, I really respect that. It was a very good push. And if that had succeeded, then it could have very much been the bull horns the other way around if he'd managed to succeed in this push. But unfortunately for him, um, there was a lot of support from the friends of the Danish player and they managed to support them fully and do a really good job of supporting them. Glorious victory, Here are the Fencibles firing away. Go on, boys, the militia. Go on, boys, you can do it. Now, over on the far side, Carl has just absolutely marmalized the Swedish flank along with the French player here. And they they were just too spread out because of the flanking actions on both sides. They had to try and plug all the gaps. And unfortunately, they were left holding uh, holding the, uh, the baton at the end, even though the baton was rusty and old. Um, but here they come. Fight them. The lifeguards are foot. They're going to do a little bit of damage. But of course, Fusilier's going to get some good shots in. Where's the sun in this map? I do not see it. It's over there. We need to get the sun in the background. Nice thumbnail, boys. There we are. The glorious French fighting on the Syrian ridge. Come on, boys. Glorious palm trees in the background. And as you can see... Carl's cavalry running rampant. And he has a lot of troops left. He hardly lost any troops. That Prussian army just broke due to the pressure of the cavalry up here. They didn't even lose that many troops. They just broke completely. It was brutal. And the last lifeguards of foot is going to fall. And there we have it, guys. A very, very nice battle indeed. Carl, oh my days. 1,932 kills. That is brutal. With only 589 losses. That is huge. That is huge. The Danish player about average, which was decent. A strong move around that side. A strong move. Um, and they did manage to push them back, which was excellent. And the French player, of course, didn't have to do that much. Was a stalemate most of the time, but very good KD. And General Washington as well. Very nice indeed. On the other side, of course, there were some players that did amazing like the uh, the french player did a decent job of trying to hold them back and go and flank around that side but it was a brutal double flank for these guys and i think that's what we're going to call this video the brutal double flank we are the sipai cavalry 228 kills that is ridiculous
ridiculous. 176 for these guys as well. 169 for the Nizam Kader infantry. And 140 found for the five. Look at them. Just this cavalry just going absolutely crazy. This Nizam Kader though. Wow. 169. That is very good. Uh, very good indeed. And the units that didn't do that many kills were ones that hardly lost anyone. So very good KD overall. Amazing, uh, amazing battle by uh, Carl and an amazing battle overall. A double flank victory, which was great. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, subscribe, and comment. That would be amazing. Really helps the channel out. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again on the next video. Thank you.